Hi, this should be an interesting little video. It involves my new EEV Blog BM235 multimeter. And this is something I didn't realize, but uh, people who have bought this, um, a couple of reports started to flow in that it actually produces a high pitch uh, whine when you turn the backlight on like that. There's a very faint, if you put your ear, like some people can like hear it from, you know, like a standing distance away. Other people have to like put it right up to their ear to hear the thing, but it's producing a high pitched tone. Now, I didn't actually notice this when I uh, evaluated the original unit and um, ordered these things, um, but sure enough, it is on the original one as well, but I've got to hold this trust me right up to my ear to sort of do that so they're seeing and I've tested various um I had like you know still had 20 or something here and I tested various ones and there seems to be quite a significant difference between units some are louder than others and there seems to be a slightly different uh frequency between uh units as well so I thought we'd just do an investigation but it's already been done by um some forum uh members and people on the uh EEV blog IRC channel. Yes, there is such a thing. Apparently there's people who hang out on the EEV blog IRC channel. And uh, they discovered the uh, problem in this thing. And uh, so we do know the solution. But hey, I thought we'd just take a look at it because it's interesting. And it's something I've mentioned way back in episode number 33, part two, back when they YouTube had 10 minute time limits. I had to do two parts. Hmm. Now, I'll do my best to try and get this sound on the microphone here. It's incredibly difficult. I've tried different microphones and things like that, but I'll give it a bash. Here we go. And that, if I speak very softly and whisper, I've got my gain turned all the way up. And maybe you can hear it. Shh. So that's the backlight on, and I'll turn it off. That's now off, it should be gone and back on. So there you have it. You clearly heard that tone there. It's around about five kilohertz or so, and it's clearly coming on when you turn the backlight on it. Otherwise, it's uh, completely silent. So it's something to do with the backlight inverter circuit that's actually driving the uh, LEDs in here because this thing is um, only powered from uh, two AA batteries, right? So they're 1.5 volts maximum, three volts maximum. So the white LEDs in here obviously need at least that to work. So when the batteries drop, eh, haven't got enough voltage. So there needs to be some sort of uh, boost converter in here to actually drive these LEDs. And that's what the, the problem is. So I won't leave you hanging. Yes, it is the backlight uh, circuitry in here. But if we um, have a look at inside this thing, then when you hear something like this, there are three typical reasons why you would hear some sort of whine or tone coming from an instrument. But all of them involve some sort of electromechanical uh, process to, you know, generate to vib something needs to vibrate to generate the sound, uh, the audible sound that you're hearing. And of course, the prime culprit might be look, we have a uh, little uh, piezo ceramic uh, buzzer inside this thing. It's designed to generate sound. Is it that perhaps? So you'd naturally uh, think of that, but that's um, fairly easy to rule out. Now, the second one is uh, in inductors. Inductors can actually. Um, they're, they're coils of wire, and at the right frequency, they can actually uh, vibrate and do things like that. Well, the only inductor in here is this puppy on the bottom, but and, and he looks like, oh, look, here's the backlight, the springs for the backlight down here. Here's the backlight board with the LEDs on it down here, and you might think, oh, it's going over to the inductor, but if you actually follow the traces, it's not. I believe that inductor, I don't have the schematic for this, but I believe the inductor is actually part of the um, electric field detection uh, circuit. So it's got nothing to do with the backlight at all. Now, another common one is uh, transformers, of course. They've got laminations of material in there, and if they're not uh, very tightly mechanically bound, they can actually vibrate. And you may have heard 
that classic, you know, 50, 60 hertz transformer hum come in from an instrument. Well, it's clearly not that. We don't have any uh, transformers in here. They're not uh, whining, you know, especially like a switch mode DC to DC uh, transformer, which operates at higher frequencies, which can be in the audible uh, range, by the way. If they're, uh, you know, that lower frequency, usually DC to DC converters are a higher you know, frequency in the, you know, in the non-audible range, i.e. greater than 20 kilohertz, you know, maybe a couple of hundred kilohertz, even in the megahertz uh, range. So generally, you're not going to get them from DC to DC converters, although I have heard them happening, some that operate down in the audible range. But actually, as you can see, there's no traditional DC to DC converter in here, no uh, transformer, anything like that. So it's not that. So the last remaining one, you have to actually go back to uh, episode number 33, part two, as I mentioned uh, before, way back in the old lab, when I did a tutorial on uh, capacitors. And I mentioned ceramic capacitors, and in particular, multi-layer ceramic capacitors, as you've no doubt, you know, little uh, 0603 ceramic capacitors and stuff like that, that you typically see in all modern electronics. Well, these can actually be uh, microphonic. They can actually pick up sounds. So if you're, I'm talking now, and trust me, these little multi-layer ceramic capacitors in here will actually be picking up that sound and due to um, microphonics, they will actually um, be generating a minute, might be microvolts, but they'll be generating minute voltages across the capacitor. And that comes about because of the name of the things. It's a dead giveaway, multi-layer ceramic capacitors, and they're constructed using as the name implies, multiple layers in there, and there are uh, ceramics. So they actually become piezo-ceramic transducers, just like this little puppy up here, just like those uh, transducers you used to in all, you see in all sorts of products, those little flat uh, piezo-ceramic transducers. Exactly the same thing is going on, except you've got multiple layers inside these multi-layer uh, ceramic capacitors. So not only are they microphonic and they can pick up sounds, it works in the reverse as well. They uh, actually exhibit the piezoelectric effect just like a piezoceramic transducer up here. If you apply a voltage to them, an AC voltage in the audible range, they may actually vibrate and emit a tone and, and the PCB can actually help amplify that and other stuff. But uh, yeah, these things can actually the little tiny capacitors in here can generate sound. Amazing. So given that this uh, buzzer is under uh, software control, comes directly from one of the pins, eh, I don't think it's that. Given that we don't have any inductors in there in the circuit, I don't think it's that. We haven't got any transformers in there. Nah, it's not that. What's left? These multi-layer ceramic capacitors. Bingo. Let's go to the data sheet, as you should have done first and you could have it would have been probably obvious what the culprit was so here we are at the data sheet the hy2613c is the one we have and bingo right here it tells you build in charge pump a lead backlight built in charge pump so if we go down we should be able to find this um, i hope you can read your chinese but uh yeah um internal we can't see it is there a charge pump in there somewhere there's got to be It'll show you somewhere. Anyway, if we keep going all the way with LBJ down here, then wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. All the timing diagrams. Fantastic. Bingo. Here it is. There's our lead driver charge pump and it's your typical capacitor charge pump and you can see that it's actually got a current sense resistor uh, down here so it can actually control uh, the current going through the LED so it's going to be a constant current generator operating at some frequency that frequency we don't know it's not in the uh, data sheet at all at least it, well if you can't read uh, Chinese there it is is it uh, 15 milliamps is that the uh, maximum obviously it's going to it's probably the maximum. It's going to depend on the resistor value down here. But we can see that we have this uh, 10 microfarad. Well, assuming that they've uh, followed the application note here, there's going to be a 10 microfarad output uh, smoothing cap, and there's going to be a 1 microfarad uh, charge pump cap in here. 
So there it is, there's the culprit right there, C44, 10 microfarad multi-layer ceramic capacitor, and it's probably one of those dodgy, you know, Wi-Fi U dielectric material or something like that, you know, the ones that are really horrible, have really horrible thermal and electrical characteristics, but they're great for bypassing applications and, you know, stuff like that, they're just fine for it. But they're a horrible dielectric and they can, in theory, be more susceptible to this sort of problem. And by the way, this problem uh, only happens to uh, class 2 ceramics. I don't believe there's a single case of it ever happening with class 1 NPO uh, type uh, ceramics, those uh, zero temperature coefficient ones that are uh, much lower value. So what we want to do is actually uh, get in here and probe this thing and see what happens. See if we can measure some stuff on here, but as you can see the battery compartment has these two springs here and they contact these little pads down here and it's really annoying. I'd have to like solder some, you know, contacts on there because if I put the go put the board back in, well we can't probe anything, can we? It's really annoying. Maybe like I could solder some wires on and then bring it back out for example and then screw the board back in and bring it back out. That's one way to do it. And another way to do it, which is what some of the guys on the forum have done, is just uh, physically remove the screen like that, whack the board uh, well, back, in, back in, there we go, and then you can access and uh, probe stuff th through the front here. But of course, we're disconnecting the load from this puppy, we're disconnecting the LED. So I think I'll do it the other way, I'll put the screen back in, I'll um, solder some wires on uh, to some various places, and then we can uh, bring that back out. All right, what I've done is solder four little wires on here. We've got uh, ground and the out main output uh, 10 microfarad filter cap, which is the uh, culprit here. And then we've got the um, charge pump capacitor. So both wires coming out there. I've just bent them around like that. I could actually try and bring it out the optional LED hole here. Um, well, optional, it's not an option on this model, but there's actually, curiously, there's a footprint down there. So maybe I should install an LED on there and uh, see if it, uh, you know, see if it does anything. Anyway, um, maybe we can probe that. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to sit that on there and it is a little bit tricky and we can actually get, eventually, get contact and power it up. Beauty. And here we go, I'm probing directly across the 10 microfarad output capacitor that uh, C44, that's the output filter capacitor. It's a constant current drive, uh, boosted constant current drive, and I've got it set to uh, DC uh, coupling here, and my ground point's right down there, 500 millivolts per division, so one volt, two volts, three volts, there we go. So it's around about that three volt level, but we can uh, AC couple that and uh, bring that back up here. Bingo. Now if we have a look at the signal here, you'll notice that not only does it have this interesting looking uh, little bump in there like that, okay, but it's jumping around like a jackrabbit, okay, and if we stop it, you'll notice that there's, look, there is another period inside there, it's sort of oscillating like that as well. And you'll also notice it's not a fixed frequency either. You can actually see the difference between that, that peak and that peak is shorter than the time period between that one and that one. And you can actually hear this. Um, sorry I can't mix it directly with the, uh, well, actually I probably can mix it with the microphone. Hmm. But you can see it jumps between, you, you saw, ah, there we go, almost perfect, right? It jumps between periods of almost perfect and this is Touch sensitive. I was getting it before, trust me, now it's not cooperating, the white coat syndrome, but you can see, I can actually get it where it is almost a perfect tone, okay, and you can actually hear it as well. I'll try and mix in the audio in a second if I can get this damn thing to cooperate, but it is sensitive to all sorts of, and it can, well, there it is, there it is, bang, you saw it, right? It was almost perfect, and if you've got your ear up to it, you can actually hear a perfect tone. Okay, I'm whispering again. Hopefully you can hear this. I'm trying to mix in the audio. I'm using my external wireless mic, and I've really got to turn the gain right up. Here we go, that's perfect tone. And hopefully you can hear it glitching. So as you can see, it's jumping around like a jackrabbit there. I had uh, smoothing mode on before, by the way. I've just turned it to uh, 
refresh update mode. So yeah, that charge pump um, seems to be jumping around like a jackrabbit, like it's got some sort of maybe uh, pulse skipping mode or something like that in it. So yeah, it's, you know, not a pure tone at all. And it just, it, it varies like all the time, just like sitting like randomly and it seems, seems to also vary, like just sitting there, it'll vary. And it also seems to vary when I uh, physically uh, touch and, you know, play around with the unit as well. And if we have a look at the frequency of this thing, um, you know, the frequency counter up here, I don't know what it's detecting anyway. It's still updating because it's a hardware uh, frequency counter in the background. But I've got my cursors here, and you can see uh, delta T here is uh, 3.86 kilohertz. There we go. And if we turn the cursor over to that shorter period there, we're looking at uh, 5.12. So it's going to, you know, vary and jump between those two frequencies. That's why I, it often sounds very muddied. It's not a pure tone at all. And if we have a look at the waveform on one side of the charge pump uh, capacitor, you can see that, or you can see it switching where it actually switches on here. So yeah, that's, you know, it's doing, yeah, it's pretty consistent there. Actually, but as I said, it varies and the chain, the tone changes when I actually disconnect the probe. So see if we can see a change up here when I disconnect this. Yep, see? I changed it. The capacitance of the probe. And there's the other line there, not a huge amount of difference. But you can certainly see, if I disconnect that probe, I will upset that. There we go, upset the apple cart. Oh, doesn't like it, but it's actually more stable when I actually load it down with the probe. I'm using a times one probe here. I'm not using times 10. If I switch it to times 10, then uh, it's still loaded it down somewhat. There we go. And check out the high frequency ringing on that. Look at that. Whee! And if we go over here, we'll see it here as well. Love it. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, everyone wants to see the money shot, which is the microphone. So I've got my uh, wireless mic, the output here. I've got like max gain, so, you know, it's going to be pretty horrible. Channel 2, the blue waveform here is obviously my voice. Check it out. There we go. That's my voice. And uh, I haven't turned the backlight on. So we'll turn the backlight on, but this is the background level. Okay, so let me show you that. Bingo. Correlation time. Now, at first, it may just look like crap, right? And it doesn't correlate at all. I mean, look, this peak here doesn't line up with this one. But, aha, uh -huh, watch this. This is the acoustic delay. If you shift this over to here and you shift this one over by the same amount, they line up. So we've just got some delay there. That's all. A tiny little bit of delay. But it basically, this here correlates with this here, this one correlates with that, and so on. This one correlates with that. Bingo. So it's really difficult to actually pick this up. I'm um, sorry about that, but we can at least see the correlation there. And of course, if I switch the backlight off, here we go. There we go. We've just got the background. And you can see that there's no high frequency stuff on there at all. Ah, this is better. I've increased the output gain on the microphone here, and this is what I'm getting. Here we go. This is much better. And you can have a look at, see those peaks? Look at that. Those bottom peaks precisely correlate with a fixed amount of delay. The delay is the acoustic delay. So, um, look, I mean, there's, you know, it's not an exact match for the uh, for the voltage waveform on the capacitor, but this has to do with all the piezo ceramic nature of the thing and how it actually produces sound. But as you can see, the frequency correlates, and that is what matters. That's what's producing the sound there. So that pain in the ass, ten microfarad multi-layer ceramic capacitor, gotcha. And if I start that again and then turn off the backlight. That's a normal background. It's just picking up the regular background um, hum and other crap here in the lab. But none of that 5 kilohertz uh, frequency content. 
So that's all very interesting, but what is the fix for this thing? Well, the fix is to uh, change that capacitor. Now, this could have happened between uh, various batches as well, depending on what uh, 10 microfarad cap. If they didn't specifically specify in manufacturing in the bill of materials a specific part number and model of capacitor, always from the same manufacturer, which is, you know, not all that untypical um, when you're just talking about a Joe Bloggs 10 microfarad uh, bypass cap like this. You may think, well, you know, what's the big deal? It's a 10, it's value doesn't exactly matter. You know, it can be half that, it can be double that, you know, it, it's not a huge big deal. It's just for a backlight here. So there, you know, wouldn't surprise me if they haven't specified that. So the uh, purchasing people can just go and choose, you know, pretty much free to choose, if it's not specified, free to choose any capacitor they can get from anywhere, as long as it's, a, you know, exactly the same size, the same voltage rating, it's 10 microfarads, blah, blah, blah. But this is a problem that is most definitely going to uh, vary between manufacturer of capacitor, between model, between dielectric, between different physical sizes, be it 0603, 0805, 1206, etc. Um, what sort of uh, current that we're actually, what it's filtering, things like that. It's it's going to vary a lot. So how can we fix this thing? Well, we can simply try and change the cap either to a, another 10 microfarad, but it's a different brand, different dielectric, whatever. I don't know. I'll just find one I've got lying around here, replace it, see if it goes away. And here's the first 10 microfarad cap I found uh, lying around 25 volts. It's an X5R dielectric, so none of this Wi-Fi U rubbish or anything like that. But I don't know what is actually inside this thing. And yes, the X5Rs, you know, your um, X7Rs, they can have exactly the same uh, piezoelectric effect as well. So anyway, I'll whack one of these in and see what happens. And here's a close-up shot of uh, the cap I took out there, just desoldered that puppy. Look, for a 10 microfarads, that is very, very thin. It's not thick like this X5R. So I think it probably most likely is a Wi-Fi U uh, dielectric um, because that's the only way to, you need that uh, better dielectric, better in terms of giving you greater capacitance um, for size anyway, but much poorer uh, performance. So it's most likely one of those, you know, Wi-Fi view dielectrics because look at the physical size of it, 10 microfarads, but I don't know the voltage of it as well. This um, X5R I've got here is a 25 volt one. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a better technically a bit better dielectric and it's higher voltage, hence why it's bigger. So I'd be absolutely stunned if this thing um, uh, produced the same uh, frequency. Anyway, if it does produce a tone, I don't think it will. I reckon there's an 80% chance I'll probably uh, fix this thing by whacking in this cap. Let's see. So did it fix it? Let's find out. Oh. can still hear something. It's not the same. It's not even close to being the same amplitude. Oh, it's really, I've got to put it right up, right up to my ear to hear that, but it's still, something is still there. So either it's the new 10 microfarad cap, or maybe uh, it might be that charge pump uh, cap doing a bit as well. So, hmm, maybe change that one too. All right, I tried replacing the charge pump cap, that uh, one microfarad one. I just whacked in another crappy old um, Wi-Fi V. I don't even know where it came from. But anyway, um, let's have a look. Tongue at the right angle. Still there. But geez, it's so low. Like, you wouldn't even bother worrying about that. It's just like... That is ridiculously low. I mean, I don't even know if I'll be able to capture that on the microphone. And that's what I'm getting now with the backlight on. Sorry, I don't have any uh, sync signal, anything to trigger from, basically, because I've disconnected the wires, but I'll turn the backlight off. And now on. There's something there, but it's barely picking it up. And if there is something there, well, we're talking uh, 3.1 kilohertz now. So, yeah, it's changed frequency, which is exactly what you'd expect uh, because you're putting a different cap in there. So it is, looks like it is the new 10 microfarad cap I put in there. But you can see, like, it, you basically cannot hear the thing anymore. So, essentially, 
problem fixed. It's just a matter of choosing the right cap. Some are much more susceptible than others. It's going to depend on all sorts of parameters, which oh, it's almost, you know, suck it and see, really. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks to uh, the people on the forum and people who've uh, bought this meter and actually reported this thing because it's something that I didn't notice. It was so low, but once it was reported to me, yeah, I can kind of hear it. But now I've essentially fixed this particular unit. Uh, I've reported it to Bryman. They're going to uh, research it and get back to us. And no doubt they'll uh, fix the issue. So that's an interesting little uh, practical example of piezoelectric effect in multi-layer ceramic capacitors. Watch out for it. It can be a real trap for young players. It can really come a gutter. Um, ultimately, though, it's, it's an issue with the chipset. The frequency is down in the audible range, and that's just dumb. If they switched it at 20 kilohertz or 30 kilohertz or something like that, you know, instead of down at 5 kilohertz, no one would have noticed a thing. It can go piezoelectric. Your dog might hear it or something like that, but or your cat, but that's about it. So, yeah, it's just a poor choice of frequency. The frequency might be dependent upon the capacitance, though. I haven't looked at it. There's no details in the data sheet for that sort of things. Uh, I'll link in the data sheet for the um, LCD uh, controller for this thing down below, which has the built-in uh, lead charge pump. So there you go. Hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time. Oh, by the way, while I was uh, playing around with this, I and trying to get the microphone to pick this up, various different types of mics, I actually thought I'd try my uh, Stanford Research um, uh, filter. Um, what is it? The SR something or other. I don't know. SR650 uh, programmable filter you've seen in a previous video. I thought, oh, if I can filter out all the other crap, I'll get a nicer waveform and uh, stuff like that. Uh, you know, if I can like put in a um, a bandpass filter at you know f you know three to six kilohertz or something, then I can filter out all the other crap. I'll get a nicer signal. Turns out the fan in this thing, as I noted in the previous video I did on this, I think it's just so ridiculously loud. It just ruined everything. So yeah, time to upgrade the fan in this thing. Bloody test gear with noisy fans. Hate them.